just uh, take a moment, please, for a moment of silence for Mary Moriarty, who recently passed. She was a very active member in this community, and her and her husband were one of the founders of the Merrimack Ambulance and Rescue Service. Thank you very much. Okay, announcements. Wednesday, February 24th to Friday, March 4th at 5 p.m. is the filing period for candidates running for town offices to be elected at the town meeting on April 12th. Thursday, March 10th at 7 p.m. in the James Master Cola Upper Elementary School All-Purpose Room located at 26 the Busick Lake Road will they be the town deliberative session. And on Thursday, March 24th, in the Matthew Thornton Room will also be a regular council meeting. I'm also going to add on the 24th, I have arranged an agenda item whereby the town moderator, the town clerk, and the chief of police will be coming here and we're going to have a conversation about the polling sites for the November election. Okay, so we are attempting to pull questions together to help them prepare for the meeting, and so we're going to have a conversation about what we're going to do, okay? The other thing I do want to also clarify is that the town elections on March, April 12th are going to be at JMU's, okay? That has historically been where they've been held, and that will continue to be where they're held. I'll keep on saying that in the future as well. Madam okay. Chair? Yes. Is Council Dwyer going to be here tonight? Oh, thank you for all. Obvious evident, isn't it? I understand that, but I Dan want the Dwyer record. and Island Cabanel are both excused from this meeting. Thank you for the reminder. And Paul. Thank you, Madam Chair. Next Friday, Merrimack Police All Stars will be battling the James, James Master Cola Upper Elementary School teachers in the annual Police and Children Together PAC basketball game on Friday night, March 4th. Come root on your favorites as they battle it out <coughs> for the title of, at JMU's at 6.30. All proceeds will be going to the PACT program. The New Hampshire Right Riders, which is a private organization in Merrimack, is tasked with the responsibility of maintaining and managing the Jonathan Seminole Memorial ATV Park on Lawrence Road. They will be holding a membership drive at Tortillo Flat on Saturday, March 12th, between the hours of 1 and 4 p.m. Those interested in learning more about the club or the ATV park are encouraged to stop by or call 459-3119. Thank you. Okay. Next, Kinder Morgan. I, what I did is I looked up the action item list that we've had ongoing. And the only thing I really need to highlight for our people, because everything else is either ongoing, for example, maintaining contacts at FERC and New Hampshire Congressional Delegation. That's an ongoing process. I just want to highlight two things. One, there still is not a survey access agreement, period. There's been no contact, been no request. In fact, it may be moot now if they're talking about the new route. So we have not heard anything. The other is there also has not been a permit for working on town road rights of way. The application was submitted, but it was incomplete, and there has been no attempt to complete it. So the state has given permission for state roads, but there is no permission for town roads. And that really is the only thing. Everything else is really documenting letters we've written, those kinds of things, okay? I had promised I was <coughs> going to update that, so I wanted to get that done today. Yes, Absolutely, Jody. And I'm assuming the public meeting with the Merrimack uh, Village District, our water department, is never ever going to happen either. I have not heard. Okay. Do we have a person okay. in the audience that might be able to guide us? And maybe he can say something during the public, but maybe yeah, not. Yeah, I, we haven't heard, so the, there's, that's what I figured. Thank you, Lon. So Lon Woods okay. has informed us that there is no meeting set. Okay, comments from the press or public? Seeing none. 
Let's move on to recognitions, resignations, and retirements. Town committee member resignation, the town council to consider the acceptance of the resignation received from town center committee member Deborah Huffman. Move to accept with regret. regret. Seconded. Okay, may I read before we actually take a vote a letter from Deb? Sure. She asked me to say that she was unable to be at the meeting tonight, but she wanted me to uh, read this out. It has been an honor to serve on the Town Center Committee under the experienced leadership of Peter Flood and Nelson Disco and with dedicated participation by representatives from the school board, the Chamber of Commerce, the library trustees, and others. This committee has demonstrated that when we work together, we can achieve great things. They are truly making a difference in our town. I thank the town council for giving me the opportunity to serve on this outstanding committee, and I wish them great success. Deb Hoffman. Okay, with that, we have a motion by Tom and seconded by Bill. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. So it's 6 0 0. Got to remember six. Okay, appointments, annual review with the Heritage Commission. Come on down. Per Town of Merrimack Charter, Section 6-6, at least annually, there should be an annual review with per the Heritage Commission. This agenda item is to highlight the Commission's significant actions, current projects, anticipated actions, and to raise any concerns the Council should know or could act on. So we have Commissioner Chair Anita Craiga and member, right? Yes. Ron Woods. Good evening, Anita. Okay. Um, have you all had a copy of the annual report? Okay. Yep. I'll just um, briefly go through it. No. no. no? I don't have that. No, wait a minute. Was it in the back? I was looking at something else. No, no. Nope. Can you give us a? Um, oh, you can give us a bird's eye view, he, and we'll get it. I have one extra copy. Yep, he has an extra copy if you'd like to have it. Go ahead. In the meantime, you can talk. Though, okay, I I know how to start. talk. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, laugh at me. Okay, I'm going to read it pretty much. 2015 found the Heritage Commission with four full members and a liaison, which is Finley. We are actively seeking another member and three alternates. We have not had any luck in finding any, but we definitely want them. We have met 10 times during the year, although two of those meetings had no quorum. We are having trouble getting a quorum. And part of that, we have decided not to try for every month's meeting because too many people can't. And many of our meetings conflict with holiday weekends. <laughs> That's often That's part a of the problem. Our meetings are on Mondays, and holidays tend to be on Mondays. Um, the tour brochures for three of the four villages have been completed. 1,700 of them have been printed and distributed. I think most of you have seen them by now. I do have three extra sets here if you want them. But they're available downstairs. They're available at the <coughs> library. They're available in many places. Um, the young man who did these did a fantastic job. He is one of my Boy Scouts, and he is very good with graphics. I provided him with the information and the pictures, and he made the brochures. And number four will be done. South Merrimack, the other village, will get done eventually. Don't forget us. It's <laughs> a little more difficult to come up with the appropriate pictures because so much of the history of South Merrimack has disappeared under construction on the Milford Road. Okay. But we do have some and we will get to it. Uh, the display case at the, top of the at the top of the stairway right out here currently has a display uh, on the post offices, and on the fire department, I'm sorry, the fire department, now the post offices will be the next one. So please take a look at it and anybody who happens to see this on television Make sure you come in and take a look at the display mm -hmm. because she did a beautiful job. One of our members from the Historical Society did it. We're still waiting to do something with the plaque from the Penichuk Waterworks. 
um, it was it's being stored at the town manager's office it will go up on the wall in the underpass that will be going in when the the um, trail is done over to Watson Park it is very heavy so if you go look for it be prepared <laughs> but we, we do we still have it the signage for the Chamberlain Bridge is still waiting that's waiting for the sidewalk work to be done and I understand that there were some changes in the grant that was doing that so once we get it to spring I'm hoping that the sidewalk work will be done and Dave Brooks is getting ready when that happens to have one side of the <coughs> bridge say that it is the Chamberlain Bridge because there is right now no identification on that bridge it does say town of Merrimack but it does not say Chamberlain Bridge um, McGaw Bridge as you know that's being worked on at the moment they did uh, re remove some of the under part that was so historical they asked if the historical society wanted to store it we have nowhere to put it so right now it's over at the DPW garage maybe at some time in the future we will have some place where we could put something like that but in the meantime there is nowhere to put anything like that that it would be protected the bridge itself we are, have been informed that the state does not want to put one of those green historic signs that we had requested instead they are going to put another type of sign similar to what's over at Watson Park with pictures on it that's what we hear is going to happen I we don't have any control over it but there will be signage when that happens whatever it is um, we have not gotten the plaque from John Cromwell yet from the Anheuser-Busch property again that's going to have to wait well I, I was going to say for the ground to thaw but it kind of has in the last few days <laughs> but um, the people at Anheuser-Busch will remove it from the ground and then John Brooks will pick it up and take it over and we will work on either refurbishing the plaque or replacing the plaque until we get it there to evaluate it we don't really know um, the portraits that have been framed in the memorial conference room have not been put up yet they're still sitting on the table and I'm not quite sure it's not our project all we did was pay for the framing so you just need to have him call can you arrange I think Jackie flood wants to decide where they're going to go and she had some signs made to go with them <coughs> identifying who the people are well can we can I have spoken flood? to Jackie repeatedly and she says that she is going to work on getting it done can you call Jack we'll talk about you Jack. thank you okay thank you um, we're working on the signs to go up on the historical homes the plaques that have been in the past of the 25 that we sent letters to only eight of them replied to us so we are now being proactive and going after some of these people because we're not going to pay to get plaques made if they're not going to agree to put them on right. so we are hoping again this spring to get that done and three of the plaques that were put up in the past that had been taken down by the homeowners because they were concerned that people would be knocking on their doors looking for a tour if there was a sign <laughs> those homeowners are no longer the homeowners and I have spoken with the people that live there now and they assure me that those signs will be going up within the next two weeks nice so watch for it <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping um, we did man booth at the 4th of July celebration and we anticipate having something similar this year to what we did two years ago one of those scavenger hunts uh, so we are planning on doing it this year there will be different places we learned a few lessons last time make three times as many passports as we did last time because they ran out within the first week and I was on vacation and couldn't make any more and don't give an address of a cemetery when they use their 
the GPSs to use the address to locate these places. It didn't come up with an address for the cemetery and people didn't know where they were going. So many phone calls were received by people that said, I'm at that place, there's no house here. Oh, <laughs> so we, we learned and we will learn, continue to learn. Um, we did make a set of 16 different greeting cards that were available at Christmas time. They are still available and I hear from Kristen and Becky that people are still buying them. Mm -hmm. So they are available to town council and the town uh, manager's office. Um, we are still looking at the possibility of a historic site to get donated for, for the future location. Um, I know I appeared before you folks a couple months ago and it looks promising. At this meeting that I was here, I was told that the, the house at the fish hatchery was no longer under lease by St. Gobain, but that it's always locked up. Lo and behold, two days later, I drove by, the gate was open, lights were on, and there was a car there. So I went and knocked on How the door and, and frightened a salesman to high heavens. <laughs> Somebody was knocking on the door, but I got a tour of the place. Yes, the roof does leak. There is no tree growing through it, but there was a tree branches laying on the roof, and the roof is leaking. It will need replacement. The water and electricity and cable, all is very functional. Whether it's up to code, I do not know, and he doesn't either, but he assures me that everything works fine. He took a shower that morning. <laughs> so it looks so promising. He likes the Saint idea. Right now? They do like the idea, and St. Gobain is still using it occasionally when salesmen are in town. But it is accessible. And if somebody's there, I can get in to look at it, but there's no point in looking right now. But they are very, very positive about nice. the idea of using it, of us being able to use it. So we'll see what happens as time goes on. This is which house? It's the house at the fish hatchery. You know where the fish hatchery on was? Highway. Yeah, on DW Highway up in Reeds Ferry. It's part of the big thing that is going in up there, flatly. They were until I spoke to them. They're not at this point. Sorry. So, okay. at and least that's what he told me. Thing. They don't have a use for the house, but if no, there's a I better use that. for it, they are willing to discuss this and they think it would be a promising thing because it would be an attraction to have the historical society there for the park that they plan to build there. So all the way around, it could be a positive thing for everybody. But again, once we find out what it would involve, we've got to find out whether we can come up with finances to get the building in use. Then find a way to, if possible, move the schoolhouse to that location as well. And I think that's feasible too. But again, you can only do so much at a time. Um, just, don't move, just don't move it on voting day. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll keep that one in mind, Tom. Thank you. Um, boy, Jesus, boy. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You can tell he's not Talk running a short term right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I've been short before. <laughs> when you were in Vietnam for 13 months, you can get down to mm -hmm. 12 months to go. You're short. Okay. <laughs> Last ahead, month, Jay. this month, we voted on creating the granite signs for welcome signs for the town. We did get a, a quote, and the quote is very reasonable. Um, and the design, they will be arched, will be one at each end of town. There will be an arched granite sign on two granite posts with slots in them. That makes it a three-piece thing so that if anything should happen accidentally, we don't have to replace everything. It will be much less expensive to replace. It'll be two inches thick, and it will say, Welcome to Merrimack, 1740, one town, three villages. That's the way they will read. Cool. I have found locations to put them. The present Welcome to Merrimack signs that the Chamber of Commerce put up many, many years ago are going to be replaced by the current Chamber of Commerce. 
similar to what is already there, they're going to put the same kind of thing there again. Okay, that's not a historical type of thing. And our signs will not be at that identical location. We, we know where property is that they can go. We have not gotten permission yet. I'm not going to do that until we have the signs. But now that we have approval to get the signs built, I will have Mr. Brooks start working on them as, as he is able to, because this isn't something that's in a big rush. But they are, I'm very impressed with the way they look. The quote that he gave us was for block letters, but I'm hoping to have something look a little more historical than that. I'll work with him on it, but we're going to do it. The ice house and the corn crib that we have been talking about, some time ago there was a corn crib that came off of a farm over in South Merrimack, and it was brought to somebody else's house to preserve it when the farmhouse was going to be torn down and the other buildings were going to be put there. They asked the Historical Society if they wanted it. I had nowhere to put a corn crib. <laughs> so I said, I'm afraid I just can't as much as I'd like to. After talking with folks here about that possibility, we're hoping to be able to get it moved over to Wasserman Park. And there is also an ice house that's over on Fuller Mill Road. It's the oldest ice house around, and it's not in very good condition, but I'm not sure it can be moved as such. It may have to be disassembled and reassembled on a foundation, but it is in good enough shape that that could be done. And the owner has said, you're welcome to it before I tear it down. So again, we have to wait for weather conditions. Um, I'm not sure when winter is going to come and leave. <laughs> it's minute by minute this year. <coughs> but that is in the plan, and we plan on doing it. As you can see, the Commission and the Historical Society work hand in hand on many of the projects, and we will continue to do so. Um, most of the members of the Heritage Commission are also members of the Historical Society, so that we don't argue with ourselves very often. Well, that can be difficult sometimes, too. But that's basically what we're doing. There is one change in the annual report because there is a typo in there that I have corrected, but it is not in my copy of it yet. I didn't give the name. No. <laughs> so, but it, we did correct it because there was a, there were three words in there that shouldn't have been there. They were left over from a previous one that didn't get deleted. So, do you have any questions of us? Sounds like you're doing great stuff, and we appreciate the work you folks are doing. Thank you. Shorthanded as you may be. But we have fun. Don't that's we? Yes, that's we even do. better still. <laughs> so okay. presently, you have one full-time opening and three alternates. And uh, are you talking about how frequently you presently meet? I mean, you said on Mondays. Probably it's going to be every other month. Okay, probably. So but at each meeting, we will set the next meeting. So we are planning on having one next month because the two of us were the only one present at the meeting we had two weeks ago. But we did get on the phone and do phone conversations with two members who could not be there. But we really need to get people together to be able to have a productive meeting. So we're, we're hoping for next month. We do have a date set for on the was it third Monday of the month. And that date is what? We've got the TV going here. I don't recall. What does that come to? Third Monday. Third Monday. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Last 21st. In February, we hit a, the night before the election, and then we hit a storm, and so things kept yeah, getting put everybody off. Everybody got affected, yeah. So. Excellent. So. Yes, Jody. So, um, and thank you. It sounds like you've been very, very busy, Yes. I think. We have been. And, and the work that you do, I think, um, preserving the history of a town is probably one of the most important things that, that anybody could do for the town, so thank you. But you said the meeting is on Monday, March 21st. What, I think that's when it is. Okay, what time and where do you hold the meetings? It is 7 o'clock and it is in the conference room downstairs in the <coughs> community <coughs> development 
so someone could come and check it out if they are interested and see anybody if it was is welcome that might to come work thank you very much yes we would be happy to have visitors <laughs> just to follow what Joe said, it is uh, an awkward meeting to find you have to be willing to walk through the door which is all unlocked yes. and let go for the noise because it's in the little conference room in the back um, so it's not signed so downstairs. They have to yeah, know where to look. Well, we probably should but put up a sign. Yeah, you should. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we haven't had the problems of people coming. But with this public uh, uh, recruitment announcement, it, uh, I'm sure it'll be a different game. But also, I just wanted to say, Anita's spectacular. She uh, is nonstop, as you can tell with the fish hatchery. I didn't think that would ever happen, and here she pulled it off. Uh, most it likely. looks like it's going to <coughs> yeah, so I'm, serendipity. I'm very impressed, and yeah. she's one of the hardest workers in Lawn Care to test to it that you ever well, we're, so we're happy to have Lawn with us. Absolutely. He has a lot of information to share with us because there are things that he knows that I don't know, and there are things that Finley knows that I don't know. It's for easy. And we all talk to one another and find out things. Yes. <laughs> and you know things about each other, too. We won't get into that. that that's right. <laughs> we're not going to. <laughs> and our other members, Deb Bolt and um, Lynn Wentz, they have a lot to contribute too, but they have difficulty getting to meetings. Have you ever uh, recruited at the Senior Center? I have spoken to them in the past, not recently. We ought to try it again. Yeah, I know, know what, what I got when I went there before is we haven't been in town very long. So we're here as elderly people when we got here. And our history isn't something that's really, they, I spoke to them on the history once, and they all looked at me like, okay. Have you ever <laughs> dealt with the school at all? Because I know that. Not at the high school. Fourth or fifth grade? Fourth, fifth grade. Fourth the historical grade. Society the speaks state? to the fourth grade every year. I go into the schools. Oh, okay. We have to do it in two sessions in each school because there are too many kids to put in at one time. So we do two at each of the three schools. I send letters out during the winter months, and we set a time in the spring to go. Fourth graders are so receptive for exactly. that kind of thing. They exactly. love it. And then from the, I forgot the name of the school, but it's the one at the Merrimack Valley Baptist Church that's directly across the street from the Historical yeah. Society. Yeah. We bring them over to the schoolhouse instead of yeah. us going to them. So they love sitting in those, even later those, those old desks. Opportunities. Yes. When they're in high school, for example, yeah. are there yeah. any community service things that? In May every year when they have that senior service day, I get a call every year, what can we do to help you? Excellent. And those kids come over Perfect. and they rake and they paint. and They've Perfect. been a big, very big help and much appreciated. Perfect. We're, we're always it's looking nice for know. volunteers uh, to that's help. That's what I'm trying to help, too. I find a lot of them that way because... I happen to be a Boy Scout leader, and they're yeah. always looking for Eagle projects. That's we right. got the inside painted last year by an Eagle Scout. <laughs> Excellent. So. Okay, any other comments or questions? No, well, thank you very much, and You're thank you for this, from the citizens for thank all that you. you do. Thank you. I have fun. If yeah. it wasn't <laughs> fun, I wouldn't do it, right? Yeah. That's it. That's right. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Anita. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Have a good night. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, next, public hearing, 2016 Milfoil Grant Funds for Horseshoe Pond and Attica Lake. And here is Jillian Harris, Planning and Zoning Administrator. The Town Council will hold a public hearing to accept and authorize the expenditure of up to $6,800 of the grant from the Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, took me a second, for mil Milfoil Control. And I won't read the whole thing. I'll go ahead, and when the motion's made, they can read the rest of it. Sure. So go right ahead, Jillian. Thank you. Yes. I just want to give a prelude to Jillian uh, on this. This has been in front of the council now, I believe, the last three years in a row, and before that it started um, every other year, and this, this milfoil problem in the two lakes that we have, um, Horseshoe Pond and uh, Lake Natticook there, that uh, we're trying to get under control. And it seems to be working. Uh, the state's very receptive. They come knocking on our door now. We don't really have to go on their door. I think that's a um, testimony to, to Jillian. She, she's on top of it and uh, getting the, um, the dive teams ready and, and things of that sort and making sure every, all the I's are dotted and T's across for the grant. So. Thanks, Paul. Um, Excellent. 
So as Paul said, we've been here before, and um, we'll probably be here again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we recently received notice of a 2016 milfoil grant award uh, from DES. And once again, um, they're recommending um, diver-assisted suction harvesting, or DASH, uh, for up to 10 days this year in both Horseshoe Pond and Natakirk Lake. Um, the dive contractor that they've selected for both uh, water bodies is Aqualogic. We've used them in the past and had good experience with them. Um, this year they were able to award on a 40% matching level, um, which is higher than they were able to do last year. And Merrimack was awarded uh, $6,800. Um, so that would be up to $3,400 for Natticook Lake and then up to $3,400 for Horseshoe Pond. And the town's matching share would be $10,200 from the Milfoil Capital Reserve Fund for a total of $17,000 expended. Um, and that's basically it in a nutshell. And we presently have how much in the Milfoil Capital uh, Reserve Fund? Around $30,000. Okay. So we're saying $10,200 from the Capital Reserve Fund plus the two grants totals. Total $17,000. 17. Yep. Yeah, it's been very successful in the past, too, and yeah. we do have to note that the residents of those lakes, especially Nanticook, have really been active. They have been very active, very active. which is great. They've yeah. been working with the town very well. Right. So. Okay, questions from Bill? Thank you, Madam Chair. Jillian, thank you for your memo. I appreciate it. Um, you write <coughs> in paragraph two that the milfoil issue continues to decrease, which is a good thing. With each year, the water bodies are treated, and therefore NHDES does not recommend herbicide treatment. Can you talk a little bit about why we're not going to be using herbicides and we're just specifically targeting um, milfoil with the DASH program? Yes. Um, we've been reducing the milfoil annually, um, so we are no longer at a level of needing the herbicide. Um, in the past, that was needed when there was a, a big infestation, um, and we, we've reduced it so much that they're only suggesting that we do DASH um, for this year and the same for last, so that's promising. It won't go away, so you're right. It is, it is <laughs> promising that we're actually staying on top of it. It, it does require maintenance and monitoring, right. and uh, there's always a chance for reinfestation, but we've been staying on top of it the past I few years. I know the folks over at Natticook Lake have been extremely vigilant about it as well, so it's uh, yes. that must be good to have it is community participation. good to have eyes and ears on the lake. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you for everything. Appreciate it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any other questions or comments? No. Saying none. Can I have a motion, please? Open for a public hearing. Oh, open. Thank you. I will now open the public hearing at 736. Saying none, I will close it at 737. Madam Chair, I move that the Town Council vote to accept and authorize the expenditure of up to $17,000 for DASH program at Horseshoe Pond and Natticook Lake of which $6,800 is from a grant from New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services or NHDES for meal foil control via DASH and the town's portion of $10,200 to be funded from the meal foil expendable capital reserve fund. And furthermore, that the town council authorize the town manager and or her delegate to execute any and all documents necessary to perfect the transaction. Motion made by Bill Boyd, second. Second. Tom Koenig, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, six, zero, zero. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Julian, thanks for your work. Appreciate it. Legislative updates from state reps. Seeing no state reps, I think we can make that decision of none. Tom Manager's report. Thank you again, Madam Chair. The Parks and Rec Department is in conjunction with the Merrimack Public Library with con continuing their free movie series at the John O'Leary Adult Community Center on Wednesday, March 9th from 1 to 3 p.m. This month movie will be West, uh, West Side Story. For, indif <coughs> for, uh, for additional information... It's not easy, is it, Paul? No. Believe me, I understand. <laughs> Take out my tongue. For additional information, contact the Parks and Rec Department at 882 1046. This week, we will be completing the installation of the new water line at the Function Hall at Wasman Park. Mm. 
Beginning tomorrow, work will begin on installation of the new heating systems in the function hall. Once the work is complete, we will be moving on to the <coughs> installation of a sprinkler system in the function hall and demolition of the Wasserman House, which is tentatively going to happen during the end of March or early April. Chief Doyle and his team met with the staff of Prime Wellness in Connecticut and, South Wind and the South Windsor Police last Thursday for a site visit of their facility. The purpose of the visit was to assess the security systems, protocol, and to observe their business model. Their intention was to make sure that all protocols are in place in terms of the response to calls for alarms, service, disturbances, etc. Once Prime Wellness opens its doors for business in Merrimack, the chief and his team The chief and his team were impressed not only with their level of professionalism, but also with the security measures in place, many of which mir mirror their current approved security plan for 380 DW Highway. After having the opportunity to see first turn their operations, facility, and security measures, they feel confident that security is sufficient to provide for a secure environment and a secure place. By comparison, the South Windsor the Police have seen a negligible impact on their calls for service to the Alternative Treatment Center since opening in August 2014. It was a very good visit. It was very eye-opening. Um, from what the Chief of Police has told us is that what they say on paper, their security protocols are, they follow. So uh, they had a very confident feeling coming out of that that this is a very professional organization. Now the planning board recently approved the change of site, is that correct? Yes. Okay, all right. From the previously uh, the bank to the Skyline Mall. Right. Okay. And the yeah. location in Windsor, Connecticut is similar. It's an end unit in a strip mall. Same company. Kind of. So any, uh, any of the information received from the Department of Health Services, Human Services, that's all the same. The process by which they're going to be doing this is the same. Right. The only thing that's different is the site. Right. Okay. Yeah. They 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 submitted their complete uh, security protocol and uh, you know they uh, explained in Procedure. detail how they were going to operate and um, mm -hmm. you know what what steps they were taking and they were con they can did some comparing contrasting to what they had done at the original site that they were contemplating. Are you all there? That's it. Oh, okay. There's no consent agenda. All business. Finance director to present his findings of his review of the MYA's internal control procedures. And do you want to? I'll bring up uh, the president of the MYA, Tom Thornton, and Miss Holly Golden is the treasurer for the MYA. Um, I had the opportunity on election night to meet with uh, Tom and Holly at the MYA building. It was uh, an interesting meeting. Um, you were able to get there. Uh, well, I followed him. He was my lead blocker, so I followed him into the parking lot. Um, the, uh, back in December of December 17th, meeting with the, the council, um, we met with the MYA and discussed some of the um, internal control implementation implementation plan and things that the council felt they wanted to see. Since then, uh, Tom and Holly have uh, really taken the bull by the horns. They have developed uh, log books for all incoming mail, whether it's an invoice or a check or anything. They split it up and, and give it to the appropriate uh, group. Uh, they're, they're in the process of changing their banks to a more friendlier bank. Uh, this is uh, twofold. Uh, one, all new signature cards. As we know, the uh, MYA has been in operations for a long time with probably a lot of people who had signature authority. So now this is new signature cards. They have a track of who has able to access the money, who is able to access writing checks and signing for checks. Um, and they're going to get their data in a more usable format. I guess their current bank is, was giving them a hard time about trying to pull some of the financial information via the web and things of that sort. So they're looking to get more financial data so um, Holly can do a lot of more checks and balances uh, on accounts to make sure 
that uh, deposits are happening when they say they're happening, checks that are written, she can see if the proper signatures are on the checks and things of that sort. Um, they're converting all their programs to use one financial software system. So at the end of a, a month or end of a day, they can, Holly can just pull the data, put it into the financial system and see how a program is, is doing. Is pivotal word attempting? Uh, it's, it, it's, it's, re it's receptiveness it's, as well, right? Yes. It's a big organization that's been doing things their own way. Um, uh, they'll go into it more detail, but I'm confident that after the meeting Holly had with the treasurers and kind of laid down the law a little bit with them, they they understand what's at stake and they understand they have to do this or else. So I believe they, they're attempting to do it, but I believe that they will be able to implement it in the future. Um, and then uh, they've also, which, which is nice, is they implemented a new cash receipt. For anybody with the concession stand, they came up with, with a with working with their auditor, they came up with like a cash log that says, okay, we took this much money in, two people have to count it, sign it, and sign it, and seal it. One of the copies goes to Holly as the treasurer, and the other copy goes to the other, the, the, the program treasurer, so they can make the deposit. So Holly can look and say, hey, wait a second, you're supposed to have $500 cash deposited, you only had 250 where's the other money? So it's more checks and balances, better control for that, and then they also have an implementation of a cover sheet for disbursements now. So either they got to keep a copy of the check and attach a copy of the check with a copy of the invoice for disbursements. As you can remember, during the audit, the auditors couldn't audit because they didn't have the financial data on invoices. This will hopefully help that process. And they go to Holly, and then Holly will file them. And then when the auditor asks for the invoices, okay. here you are, I have them, and that should help in the process there. Um, they have taken significant steps. Like I said, it, it's a big organization. It takes a while for everybody to kind of um, turn the ship around, so to speak. Uh, we sat here. We've heard that they are going to do it. They're going to do it. Tom and Holly has actually started implementation and started actually doing it. Um, okay. From what I could see and uh, talking to them and were able to show me stuff right away and, and going through and saying, well, what about this, Paul? What about this? And, and we talked some of the stuff out. So. They have actually implemented in, in some of their, their programs and organizations. Um, I just want to give you one last update is that we are holding um, their money for the January 1st quarter, and next, in a month and a half, April 1st, they're due another installment. So just want to give you that little bit of information. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Tom and Holly, and they can really explain more of in depth what they did. There's also, I did in my memo, I gave you a copy of what their auditors have said. So they are working even with their auditors say, hey, will this satisfy you for this, that, and working back and forth with the auditors. So they are trying to, to get the internal controls down and, and get them right so that they don't have this problem in the future and can get us our reports on time and, and our quarterly reports. Excellent. Thanks, Paul. Um, this is just an example of what we do with our logs. So as Paul was saying, we do we have put a lot of started to put a lot of internal controls in place. Um, as I sat here when I first took this position, I told you I would never promise anything, um, but I told you I would do our best to make things happen. And I think um, you know we are making things happen now, especially from the financial side of it. Um, you know, so while doing this, we also got to you know help run you know six, seven other programs and four thousand plus kids and keep everything in check with that as well. But this is a top of our list extremely important to do because it's something that we should have done a long time ago with the internal controls. Um, so Tolly will talk a little bit more about all this because she's been in the trenches with it and just keeping me involved in the trenches. Um, she's has, she had a first treasurer's meeting, so all our treasurers are up to date, involved. Um, everyone's in agreement, even with the program directors. Uh, moving over to all QuickBooks, you know, our current bank, I don't think, can handle what we want to do with QuickBooks. So Holly's looking into going into maybe a credit union or another bank, um, something that's more convenient for all the programs. Um, so it, it, what I just passed, I'll, I'll talk to a little bit. That's what Paul was saying about we bring things into the MYA. The mail, you see invoices, you see deposits, um, you see who... Uh, has been taking it so obviously you can see I've been getting the mail the whole time because Karen has been out so 
Uh, and I log everything. And it's just going to, whoever it's going to get the mail is going to log everything just like we did. So when Holly wants to check um, a month or two or whenever she feels, she's going to go to that treasurer and say, okay, so I see this um, deposit that you, we received. Where is it? Have you deposited in your account? And actually, she'll be able to see all that, but she'll be able to question it as well. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so that's what the, you know, and I made two different sheets, one for invoices, one, one for deposits. So we all know, and it's all very clear, um, you know, what comes into the MOA. And again, all the bills and stuff, it's going to, we're going to put a filing cabinet. We're still in the midst of putting a filing cabinet in there to keep everything at the MYA, um, just as, you know, we should and as we, you know, said we would. Um, so we are going to put everything in the bills, everything, have any transactions, the checks that are attached with signatures, that type of thing. Um, with signatures, you know, Holly is the one that reconciles everything, so she doesn't sign. Um, so I'm the one that will sign, and, you know, if it's a program director, then I will sign, you know, checks. So we always have checks and balances there, but she never signs because she's the one that has to reconcile. Um, so I'll hand it over to Holly now to uh, touch a few things because there's a couple she, she of sheets. Thrilled. Well, but, <laughs> no, 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 no. There's a couple uh, <laughs> There's a couple of forms that she did put together that, like, Paula Saint is really going to help, like, with the concessions, um, handling cash, which is, you know, very important with us um, because it's, you know, cash. it's cash. cash. I mean, <laughs> cash is king. Cash is king. <laughs> um, so I'll turn it over to you for now. So I noticed that in the audit, one of the things that the auditors had mentioned to us is that all the clubs kind of look as though they're operating as their own um, individual clubs and not under one umbrella under MYA. So I made the form so that we could all be using the same and instituting the same process and procedures. And, and then I realized too that we, in order for me to do an audit and all that, I need to have access to everyone's. And online QuickBooks makes sense for us. And then to get Paul the financials that he needs, I think if we're in one software program organizing it by club, then I can get him what he needs with not a lot of effort. Um, so we decided as a group, treasurers and directors, that we would do it on their off season because it just makes it easier for them. It's really a busy time. So we're going to do one club at a time and bring them online um, and work out the kinks with each club. So I'm hoping by the end of, and it sounds like a long time, but by next year that we'll be one organization it will feel like one organization I will do be doing all the reconciliations of all the clubs every month um, so I can see everything and reconcile and make sure that we have the backup what I'm hoping to do is every time they have their meeting they bring in their month's worth of um, record keeping and we'll just keep it in one Until place then. so that I can go through it because I f you know I feel like I'm ultimately responsible for what everybody does as the treasurer so I want to be able to answer to the auditor. So I should be able to answer the questions that the auditors have for every club. Well, why was their revenue higher or, or lower? And if I don't have my hand in it, then I can't answer that question. And I have to rely on the clubs to get that information. So, And I want to understand how they're handling things and maybe make it easier because we have had a huge turnover in treasurers with each club. So I'm hoping as well to get a little bit more documentation about what softwares they're using or I'm the sure stuff that's that we need pros and to. Cons. If they're only treasurers, yeah. they're going to learn through your way. Right, right. Hopefully. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and, you know, I'm hoping to show them too. Maybe they just don't know. I feel like we're all really working, but it, what I'm trying to tell them is that we need to see it. Yeah, you're working hard, but are you working smart? Are you doing the right things? Yeah. And trying to keep it. So, I mean, everyone, mostly everyone is very responsive to that. And, you know, hopefully I can make their lives easier too. And everyone. In the end. Yeah. So I think s slowly but surely. But I think in working with the auditors, you know, I don't have all the answers either, but I present the forms that I've used in the past and said, will this work? Will this work? What do you think? And when they stamp it, then, of course, that's something that we should we should and can use okay. amongst all the clubs. So. Well, it sounds like you're certainly responsive to suggestions. <laughs> which is 50% of the battle. Yeah, the buy-in is the biggest, I think. If you can get yeah. the buy-in from everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and then if they can't, well, then it just has to be what it has to be. Right, right. So. Um, and, and she forgot to mention that two of the biggest programs in the MYA are actually moving to QuickBooks online. One is soccer and one is football. 
Now, soccer is because Holly runs soccer. <laughs> well, and we have QuickBooks, but, but it's just on yeah, my computer on at a home. Computer, so. But th there's start, those two were the biggest programs, and to get them to move to it right away, it's kind of, okay, well, tells the other treasures, you better fall in line. <coughs> and in the if, end, if, if they, they can do it. Yeah, if the larger ones find that it's beneficial, the smaller ones will probably say, geez, if the big ones can do it, if we have a smaller. Yeah, and I'm trying to do it a little bit at a time because yeah. sometimes people, it's it hard to see the whole big, but it yeah. No, it's just, not. But it looks like it. Yeah, so I'm like, if I can just do a little piece at a time and show them that it, it's really easier once you get there. Okay. Well, we, we, we have another program, basketball is another big organization uh, for the MYA, but we don't have a treasurer for basketball, but he's on, but our director's on QuickBooks. So okay. she is actually very easy for her to go in online and do yeah, all the yeah. record circulation. Yeah. So it's really easy. So it's it's working, which okay. that's important. Questions, comments, John. You need a file cabinet. We do actually. More than one. Probably yes. a couple. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Get, get in touch with me. I got okay about twenty of them. Okay. Good. Oh. My awesome. wife is trying to empty. You might be getting I can, take, from I can take a couple off your hands. When you're a psychologist and you have <laughs> records for a practice that goes back 20 years, you got to clean them out every once in a while. So say, she's in the process of cleaning it. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, the records get shredded in our kitchen. So, well, there's controls on them, right? She's got to be careful. No, no, with yeah. It. I was going to say we could have we a bonfire. And, yeah. and you know. Yeah, yeah, so you know, so if, if that's a if that's an option for you, yeah. that would be awesome. Let us know. Okay, I'll send you an email. Thank you. You are. Is Tux playing a key role in the shredding process? No, <laughs> he stays out of the kitchen. Good. Okay. <laughs> Jody, I I'm hoping that people listen to this and they see that you are getting um, uniformity among all the clubs and that you're helping with the books and things like that, that maybe you'll get more volunteers in the future um, because it won't be as daunting as when you both step forward mm -hmm. and agreed to do this. Um, so hopefully if they see, look, it can be done. It's done, it's being done easily now and it's all uniform. We're all doing the same thing. We have people that can help you. Hopefully you'll um, be able to have a larger pool of volunteers is, is what I'm crossing my fingers for. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to thank you both again because you, you did walk into a real tough spot both of you um, but it's a really great program and so many of our kids in this town benefit from it so many families benefit from it yeah. so thanks very much to both of you for stepping up thank you Jody John yeah I know that talk is cheap but I, I would like to to comment that when you came here several months ago it was kind of like deers in the in the headlights and 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 as Jody was suggesting it's it's got to be a stressful time so what I'm looking for is some positive feedback that you're comfortable that you're, you're moving in and getting to where you're going to be here next year because we've had so much turnover that it's you know we hear a great story and then there's another person the next year and so I'd like to feel like you're making progress and you're feeling like it's less of a chore and, and more of an enjoyment and, and can proceed doing this for more than just the 12 months kind of thing yeah I, I definitely think I don't want to be sitting here again this time next year because that means we're not doing it right um, <laughs> So if we sat out of the limelight, then we're, we're doing it right, right, Paul? Um, so, yeah, but no, like Jody was saying, it's we're trying to make it so these volunteers aren't threatened by coming to the MIA to, to volunteer um, and streamline and everything. It's, it's just going to make it so much easier. But, yeah, it, I, I totally agree. And I agree with you. Talk is cheap. So I don't like to say a lot because I feel like I can That's definitely prove that, you know, when I say I'm going to do something, I'm in it for the duration. It's the challenge of getting it done and then feeling the accomplishment once it is done and seeing, you know, how what you've done has paid off. So well, I'm very encouraged. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much. But I won't promise, but I'll, we'll get no, it done. But <laughs> like well, I, said. I think what you're doing <laughs> is you're demonstrating <laughs> movement. For so long, there was no movement, talk, and no movement. Right. But I think I personally am I'm really happy that you're dealing with not only Paul, well, with the auditor. Right. And you're double checking how's this, how's that. So that's an implementation. That's not just talk, you know. And hey. whether it continues, I think, is one of the issues that Tom's talking about. But yeah. this is more than what we've received in the past in terms of actual applications. And, and it was funny when I went to Paul, this was before we all started talking about this. I told him what auditor are we going with. He just laughed. He <laughs> goes, You're getting the toughest audit company out there. And. 
<laughs> he goes, I kind of went away from him because, and he went, he did, I did these guys for eight, ten years, and I moved away to someone else. So I'm looking forward in three years moving to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> but at that point, you'll have it so streamlined and done, right. you can go to anyone. That's right. That's really what happens with them is they get you going and their internal control and they yeah, get you straightened yeah. out real well, real quick. And well, they definitely talk. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, they're Lansing. not a pushover firm. <laughs> yes. Look at it this way, right? <laughs> if you get it set up right and it's running right, they're not making as much money off you because you're doesn't take as much time to do the job. Right, right. right. <laughs> I mean, right. I really hear a lot. I'm just a volunteer, but. I don't know. I just always go back to if you make a commitment with something, it doesn't matter if you're being paid for it or not. You said you would do it. I guess that's old school, but when I say no, I'm no. going to, I'm going to. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. So, but yeah, so I, you know, hopefully we'll make it work and in the next year, you know, I can turn it around and put it in a good light instead of always well, you made a good make start. it easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do we have to make a decision about the January payment and or April? Your January, pay your January payment, if you want to give them their money for January, the month of January. and then Do we need a motion or can we do a uh, consensus? I would do it by a motion because okay. you did a motion to hold the payment. Okay. Yes, Penny. Well, it, because of the position that we find ourselves in this evening, would it be appropriate to just let the whole thing move forward as it normally would be? instead of having to come back in another quarter for, or, you know, another month and a half for the next yeah. quarter thing. If, so. that, if that's the direction of the council to just move forward with the quarterly payments as they see fit. Return to? Return to normal schedule. And then if something pops up that, you know, I'll keep checking in with Tom and Holly, and if I see something popping up before the April payment, that, uh, you know, something's going future. awry, <coughs> I'll come back to the council and let oh, them know. All right, because I, I thought... And I'm, I'm all fine with that, actually. But, I, you know, my understanding was that, you know, once they came on a solid footing with they're doing these checks and they're doing what we've looked for, it would be okay to continue on in the next year and go through that process again when they come in. Now, when is the audit done? October? October. October. Actually, uh, <laughs> we talked about this. So yeah. Not to muddy the waters, yeah. but as of June 30th, uh, we're out of contract. contract. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> we need to re renegotiate a, a contract as of for the next year, three years, whatever, and, and that those we can put additional terms or? Yeah, so at after June 30th is our year end. So that's when we, that's when I would like to see the audit done. But this June 30th, I was talking to Tom, I will only have had January, let's say, to June to really, so I would like to see the auditors audit like January through June I mean the whole year, but more focused on January to June where we've made the changes and try and pick some stuff and say, okay, yep, the forms that she put in place are working, you know, that kind of a stuff. status report on what you mm -hmm. have done. Yeah, because I can't really speak to anything prior. I've right. been trying, you know, to move it forward, but I really feel like January to June will give you a good sense of, yes, where we've made changes and are moving in the right direction. And then by next year, June, have a full audit. It'll be a full year. Yeah, because I'll have had a full year under my belt. So your motion is what? It would be to return to the return normal. to the contract and you know, the releasing the funds in the quarterly way that we always have at this point forward. And uh, the contract that's my motion. Second. Right. Motion. And then, and then we would uh, continue with our contract discussions and move forward from there. Motion made by Phil and Rata, second by Bill Boyd. Any other, Bill? Yeah, I just, um, Councilor Koenig, I think, used the right word, which is encouraged. And uh, after reading Paul's memo, I certainly felt the same way because <clears throat> going, you know, looking back historically with this whole conversation now, you know, three years, you know, my concern was there was no consistency, there was no continuity, there was no communication. and. Um, I, I, I feel like, like as Nancy said a couple months ago, I mean, the deer in the headlights comment, I think, is, is not lost on me, but I see something very different right now. And based on what Paul's talked about tonight, what you've talked about tonight, and what I've read, I, I feel very encouraged about supporting Finley's motion to, uh, to 
start you know honoring the other uh, requirements of the contract. So, so thank I'm you. thank you for the work and for all the volunteers that you've done. Um, thank you. But thank you. you know, looking forward to what the future holds with yeah. with with the progress that you've made so far. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion. You want to speak to? Oh, Tom, can you? Um, just looking back, the motion that we made last time was that we found them in noncompliance and sent them a letter, and then we would withhold payments until the council decided to resume payments. So I guess that's essentially what we're doing with this uh, motion is, it, is resuming payments. Correct. Um, I, I think I would put it as worded as we found them essentially to have returned to compliance or something with the efforts that they've made, uh, and I'm comfortable with Absolutely. that. You're in favor of that amendment, yep, Bill? Yep, no, Tom response? makes a good point. Absolutely. <clears throat> okay, with that amendment, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Six zero zero. I, Madam Chair, I have a question for Paul. Yeah. I like Holly's idea with the six month, <coughs> but my question to you is does that create, when the auditor returns their findings, does that become a qualified opinion or an unqualified opinion or? Depends what they find, really. Um, basically, the auditor should be contacting Holly in the next month or so to do a like a nine-month kind of uh, review. And of course, they're going to look at some of the earlier invoices and from the first six months. And they can really do a focused audit on, yep, we looked at these other things, <coughs> we found it, but they are making, when they write their management letter, they are making steps in the right direction over the last six, the first, over the last six months of implementation of XYZ has really improved the, uh, the, the status and, and having us have information and things of that sort. Okay. So. Okay, thank you. Very good, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Checks in Checks the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you deposit that, you know, the one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, incoming mail. I want to see it. Okay, and a new business, wellness program. Are you going to be doing that? No. You can keep going. I'm oh, fine. Yep. Are you uh, doing Yeah, this? I'm doing it. Okay, so. You're going to get sick town of Town Council boots, will so. be presented with the details of a wellness program for town employees available through a health trust and to consider the acceptance and expenditure of a $500 donation from Health Trust to be used towards promoting the program pursuant to RSA 31-95 colon B and Charter Article 8-15. Yes. You just put the colon in the dash, not the... Okay. Reverse that. <laughs> Thank you again. Um, about uh, six months ago, we did kind of a... Uh, uh, a, a biggest loser competition in, in town hall here where uh, it was a, a weight loss kind of competition and at that time Zenia, Zenia Carroll, um, uh, Zenia Simpson, sorry, my purchasing agent came to me and said, I would like to be the person, like she bought gifts and i like to be like the, the person to go ahead and, and create a wellness program and things of that sort. So I know that um, Health Trust has always been asking us to get a wellness program, get a wellness program. But one of the first steps to get a wellness program is to have a volunteer in the town to do that. So Zenia signed up for a class with them, and she went to class. And by going to class, they gave us a, a blood pressure machine for our use and $500 to see how we see fit to use. We have to report back to them how we use the $500. But they gave us like $500 to start and for gifts and, and small tokens because if there's some kind of monetary uh, value that is associated with stuff, people are more apt to, to participate. So in talking to Zenia, she felt the best way to approach this is to actually go out there and have a survey. What, are you, what is the community, the employees, looking for in a wellness program? Do they want to stop smoking? Do they want to start a walking club? Do they want, um, you know, help with financial situations? Things of that sort. So go out there and actually do a survey of our employees and try to see what they want. The other thing that she was thinking is that because we are kind of spread out, um, you know, being in, you know, she's here in 6 Babuzovic Road and then 31 Babuzovic Road is the police station and the fire station and the highway garage and solid waste. That 
excuse me, as, as things progress, if people have questions, it's kind of difficult for an employee to get from the highway garage to town hall maybe to ask the question. Whereas that if she has a little volunteers in each one of these facilities, that if they have a question, they can go up to them and say, hey, what's this about, yeah. you know, they gave us an incentive to filling out a survey, Health Trust, $50. So what's this about filling out this survey? How difficult is it? Uh, what is biometrics? What do I really need to do with biometrics? Are they going to sit me down and, and start talking to me about nutrition and my diet and stuff like that? Or well, what's involved with that? So she'd have helpers in all these locations to be able to answer these kind of questions. And of course, she'd be available for the questions. So she's looking at doing some of that stuff. Uh, and then from the survey and, and, and getting these helpers, then go out and develop a wellness program for the town. Uh, having a wellness program is actually twofold. It helps your employees, but it also helps with uh, some additional incentives from Health Trust. And as we've seen in, in our discussions through the budget and, and things of that sort, health insurance is a big bill, and you'll see it again when I do my second quarter. It's a big bill, and if you can even just change that or sway that a little bit, it's, it's a savings to the town. And buying more healthier employees and, and, and people, it should help in, in the back end, which which is the savings. But the ultimate goal is to help our employees and to give them something that they really want and, and really are looking for, whether it's nutrition classes or, you know, how, how, do I, how do I deal with a teenage boy and a teenage girl at the high school level and, and things of that sort. So that's what we're really looking at. So, so in the beginning, you're going to be taking the 500 to assess interests and needs. Correct. And then after that, Define or design, design something to Design meet the those. kind of plan, right? Okay. Right through through help, you know, dealing with and there'll be resources, and resources, okay. and, and things of that sort. Okay. But uh, you know, this was a good opportunity for us to at least get the ball rolling and, and uh, sure. the program off the ground. And, and like I said, it's um, Zenya is, is is you know a good person for this, and and I can see her. Uh, very, she's very detail oriented and, and very, and she'll she'll keep the ball rolling. And as she told me before, when I was talking to her um, this afternoon about it, there are hundreds of canned programs. Right. So we really don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's so if we want to look at a program for a walking ones? club, we go yeah. out to Health Trust and say, "Look, we're looking for a walking club. Right. Here, we have this. Boom!" And then right. she can look at it. We can modify it, do what we want with it to fit our needs. Okay, any other questions? Jody. I just, I just had a couple of quick comments. Um, I'm probably no surprise to anybody, I'm a huge supporter of the wellness programs. Um, I've seen them implemented in other municipalities, school districts, um, private employers, and I find them, they're very successful. One um, aspect of the wellness program too is, and our employees now recently, they've made some pretty substantial uh, health care concessions, so a lot of more of the money for their um, health care is coming out of their own pocket. So a lot of what the wellness programs can do is um, educate people because not at, sometimes insurance and how to use it can be daunting and confusing uh, to people and overwhelming and the wellness programs when you plug in with Health Trust, they can help educate the individual employees about using the program and how to use the program and it actually changes the way people use healthcare over long periods of time. There's actually trends, there's data that supports that. So when you do that too, your healthcare costs decline. Mm -hmm. So it, you're not, we're not going to see changes overnight, but in you know trending to um, in the future, I think hopefully we'll see. Um, less increases in our health care costs. I don't know that our health care costs are ever going to go down because I don't know how realistic that is, but cost avoidance. So hopefully our increases won't be as substantial in the future. And um, my thanks to Ms. Simpson for spearheading this because it really, you, you need somebody to get behind it and, and bang the drum and, and I'm very pleased that someone stepped forward. So thank you. Anyone else? Okay, go for a motion. Madam Chair, I move that the <clears throat> Town Council accept and expend a donation of $500 from the Health Trust to be used towards promoting the, pro the uh, wellness program pursuant to RSA 31-95 colon B and Charter Article 8-15 that furthermore that the Town Manager and or her proxy be authorized to sign 
any and all paperwork necessary to expend the monies. Second. Second. Motion made by Bill Boyd, second by Tom Mahan. Any further discussion? Just to echo what Council of Allencourt said, wellness programs do work, and I'm happy that Xenia stepped up to lead the effort here in town. Absolutely. And uh, I look forward to hear, hearing anecdotal stories in the future of people that, that will benefit from this. So, Excellent. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Six, zero, zero. Just real quick on that uh, biggest loser, I actually participated in that. And it became. You didn't need to it lose became, it. Oh, I did. I, I lost a fair amount. I, uh, it did. Trust me. It gained. Won. It became a competition that I, my wife was pretty, pretty embarrassed by me. But it was, uh, it was a great time. Weekly we'd go in and. and the two of you were in it? No, no. She oh. was, I was he, always, I was he, say, he I cheated. He came in in happy. full, you know, dungaree pants, oh, jeans, and, first way. And, and, no. and shoes. And He actually wore socks that day on the first way, and, and then he was in his shorts. And on the last way, I chopped my left pocket. arm off so I could make sure. <laughs> I, they, they, I happened to be in the office when they were started, and they said, are you going to do it? And I'm going... Sure, I'm going to do it. And then it became an obsession of mine. If it, it wasn't was for you, I would have won. <laughs> I didn't win. I didn't win. <laughs> okay, 2016 deliberative session. This is where we need to discuss the details and motions of the various articles. So we need to decide who's going to move the article and who's going to second. Article 2, I'm going to move that and Tom's going to second it. We have several having to do with collective bargaining. Who would like to volunteer? Now, Tom Koenig is not going to be at the no, deliberative, we'll the deliberative, so he's out. And I've already volunteered Dan Dwyer, even though he's not here, for the Article number four. with the one that he approved. Article 4. Article 4. Article four. Correct. I put question of Dan to move because he voted for it. Because Dan's the rep for the parks and, parks and rec. For, for the future one. So we'll have him do two. Okay, let's do Article 3. I'll make him work if he's not going to show up. That's, That's right. Not being here on this night. That's right. If you're there, you're not going <laughs> to. Okay, so Article 3 having to do with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees. I need someone to move and second. So we just assign or? I'm sorry? I'll move Article 3. Okay, so Bill will, and who's going to second? How about Jody? <laughs> we're going to go this way. If a, okay, for Article 4, we're going to do Dan. And how about, uh, Tom's not going to be here. How about Bill to second? I'm going around. Uh, okay, Article 5, which is the Teamsters. Ask me. Article, Article 3, 2 was the budget. Article 3 was the... Yep. yep, and this Article 4 was Dan and Bill. So Article 5 is going to be Finley. Have I seconded that one? No, you're going to move that one. And Tom Mahan. People aren't volunteering. No problem. Volunteered. <laughs> Article six. Who haven't we done now? You know, Tom. Tom. May, uh, Tom Mahan can move, and it can be seconded by Jody. That's Article six. I'll move Article seven. Article seven. Bill Boyd. <laughs> and As second. Predicted. I'm sorry. As predicted. What do you, what do you okay, Jody will do second on Article 7. Now, Article 8, do we have to do Was that there a for bill? the articles? Do we have to do motions for that? No, you have to do All of them. Move okay. I'll move um, it. Okay, so Tom Mayhem will move it, and I'll second. And I think I'd like to designate Dan Dreyer as a motion for this. How's that? Dan will be. Uh, it's Pax and Rex, so I think that's. Yep. Absolutely. 
And second, who's only had one chance? Ah, Finley. Thank you for volunteering. Oh, it's court. Okay, there's nothing else we need to do with that, right, Paul? No, Just that. Just so that you're aware of yeah. So, we, so I need to notify uh, Dan of his assignment. Then yeah. I should fake him out and tell him something he, he really doesn't want. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, you should. No, no. You <laughs> should. That would be <laughs> good. Oh, I have the <laughs> oh, oh yes, that's good. Okay, second that's quarter good. financial update by Paul McKelly. <laughs> We're mean. I'll be sure to pause between sips of Guinness to understand that you're going through each of those. <laughs> yeah, you will not. I be apologize for not being at the delivery Ireland, session in yeah. advance, but I'll be in Ireland. <sighs> Having a wee bit of Guinness. Okay, right ahead, Paul. Oh, I'm you're waiting. waiting for our machines to turn on. Yeah, well, my attendance will be dependent on whether my flight gets back the day before. <laughs> yeah. There is no snow for those days in March. No. No snow. You've just <laughs> cursed yourself, you know. <laughs> and it was what temperature? Why don't we, why don't, that's just Tell me about 61. it. 61. Yeah, we'll get it in March. <laughs> we'll get the ice. Okay, go ahead, Paul. Thank you. Um, as, as required by the, the town charter to give the uh, town council the financial update quarterly, um, I'll be presenting the second quarter financial report, which is from uh, September 1st, 2015 to December 31st, 2015. Um, it's a little bit later than normal, but with our schedule in January um, and the meetings, it got pushed out a little bit. Um, the first one that we've looked at in the past is, is the health insurance, and uh, the health insurance is going up uh, slightly. We, we knew that because we had an increase in our rates last year, this fiscal year, 2015-16. It's uh, running about uh, $26,000 more than last year at this time, and uh, or we see the trend uh, staying about the same throughout the rest of the fiscal year. Uh, we have a number of positions that, that are vacant that we're realizing some health insurance savings uh, from, um, and uh, we're trying to get those positions filled as quick as possible because they have been vacant for a while. Uh, New Hampshire Retirement System, this is the first year, 2015-16, of a, a big increase. Uh, you'll see that... Um, on the uh, group one, it went up not as much as what's going on with the police officers, the police officers, New Hampshire retirement contribution by the town went up significantly over 25% from 2014-15 to 15-16. So uh, no big surprises there. We plan for it in the budget. Uh, the budget is, is uh, we have enough money definitely to cover our financial obligation to New Hampshire retirement system. Overtime, the overtime comparison um, is, is interesting. Um, a, as you can see, um, police's overtime is up, uh, a slight uptick from, um, from last year, and that was due to a situation that occurred during this quarter uh, that's been resolved. Uh, fire overtime is, is up, and, and that's one of the reasons why we came in front of the council during budget season and asked for more money um, so that they can operate a, at an efficient level. Um, highway. You know, knock on wood, that uh, yeah. highway overtime so has been far. down so far uh, through December. Um, we we had some s some snowstorms. We had in, in this quarter last year in 14, 15, we had that big uh, a Thanksgiving Day snowstorm. So this one is uh, this quarter was a quiet quiet quarter, and hopefully the next three quarters will be quiet also for highway. Um, <laughs> solid waste is about the same, and, and there's been a slight uptick in some of the. Uh, other departments, but nothing to, to be shocked over. Uh, before I move on to the revenue, I do want to say um, we've been keeping a close eye on our welfare department. Um, as, as you know, uh, welfare, we have 
really three sections in welfare. We have the welfare administrator's salary, then we have our other organizations' funds, and then we have what we call is our direct support funds, which are our housing and, and our pharmaceuticals and things of that sort. Um, as of December, we're doing well with, with the housing for welfare, but as of the February 1st, uh, we spent the full budget for our housing allotment to help on rents and mortgages and things of that sort. Um, on a good note, though, because of the expanded Medicar Medicare Part D, we're not seeing the cost for our pharmaceuticals. So we have hardly spent any money in our, our pharmaceutical line to help out individuals, but our housing line, and uh, with Pat Murphy, our welfare administrator, being housed in the finance department, uh, every time she comes in for a payment, we talk. So we're, we're on top of it, and we've, we've been keeping a close eye on her budget right now. Um, with fingers crossed, I think we should be fine, but if we need to, we'll, make a, we'll have to make an adjustment because as state law states that you can't turn them away. You have to pay your welfare claims. Mm -hmm. So if, we, if that com comes down to that where we're going to overexpend that budget, I'll definitely get involved in, with the so town manager. So you can transfer within that. Right. Okay. And we, ha we have sufficient we, – we do. We have sufficient appropriations because we do have a number of, of openings and – Right now, with the quiet winter, and hopefully, like I said, I'm praying that it you stays. You are really quiet. cursing yourself. I know I'm cursing and myself. Us. So, but I'm, I'm hoping that it stays that way. Um, but there, there is significant money in the budget in other areas also. There's some salary savings, so okay. we, we have that. Uh, moving on to revenues, all our revenues have an uptick. Um, the Feds, um, the Federal Reserve banks have increased the uh, increased the the prime rate by a quarter. That helps us, believe it or not, gives us a little more interest income than, than we had the year before. Uh, building permits, uh, another sign about the economy. There, there's people that are, are starting to invest back into their homes, so we've seen a, an uptick there. Uh, the biggest uptick is, of course, our automobile registrations, and we had discussions during the budgets uh, about that. And uh, what, we, what we've seen is, is that I can finally put my, my finger on the pulse of why that's happened, and it isn't – you know, people are just buying new cars, but the value of the used cars, they, they might be buying a brand new used car for them, but the values of a brand new used car is, is where, it, you know, is where it's at. If, you, if you're looking at, you know, just 10 years ago, if you're buying a 2005 Corolla, you know, the value might have been $5,000, but if you buy a 2010 Corolla, it's almost $9,000 for basically the same model in those five years. And, and those are the model years people are buying from. They're buying from 07 to 0. Oh, oh, 010, oh, you know, not, not oh, 010, but uh, 2010, 2011 in their used cars. So we're seeing an uptick in the used car market, and we're also seeing an uptick in the prices of a new car market. Because, for instance, a pickup truck now is costing forty-five to $50,000 for some of the bigger pickup trucks. And people are buying them because gas is low. So as long as gas stays low, we'll see that market increase. But even the smaller pickup trucks are still in the, the f you know, 35 to 40 for uh, – High end for high high end trucks, yeah, right. And that's what we're seeing in the parking lot. You know, a lot of nicer vehicles coming in right. from all over the place. I mean, Maine, Massachusetts, people are, people are with the internet now has exploded too. So they're getting really great deals, and they're not afraid to go to New York or someplace else to buy them. So um, projecting overall that will be about three hundred thousand to four hundred thousand dollars over our automobile registrations. Where we're, we're right around $3.9 million, $3,950,000 is what we had in the budget this year, 15, 16, for all mail registrations. I'm thinking we're going to be around $4.3, $4.4 million if, if everything stays, stays the same way. So we'll definitely have an, revenues will be healthy again this year where we're not trying to balance our appropriations against revenues. For so, this year. We have for to this year. Remember that. For this year, fifteen sixteen, and we're only talking about fifteen sixteen right now. Got to take off our budget hats that we're talking, but this is just for this year. For now, and like I said, I I do believe we we definitely have we're in good financial shape. We have money in the bank, so to speak. Um, you know, so we we are, and, and we're not just spending the spend. We're we're looking at all our our purchases and and needs and wants and, and things of that sort. So excellent. Any questions from anyone? Seeing none. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Let's move on to the poll, uh, polling location discussion. Uh, this will be a short one. This is just we need to 
Just to, previously, I had made the announcement, I'll repeat it here, that on March 24th, there's going to be a town council agenda item related to future polling sites related to the November election. Okay. Um, but this has to do with the election, the town election on April 12th. The town council does have to vote to be able to have this election at the JMU's. Um, we have verified with the school. It is all booked. I talked to Diane Tripper. All those plans are made. So we have, as a, a council, have to vote to make sure that the site is, for the designation is that for the site. So I can do the motion. Madam Chairman, I move that uh, the town, that we designate the James Master Caller Upper Elementary School as the location for the annual town meeting uh, location on April 12, 2016. Second. Motion made by Tom Mayhan, second by Bill Boyd. Any questions, comments? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Six zero zero. Okay, let's get into minutes. Minutes for January 21st. We had tabled these, had we not? Yes. Yeah. Okay, January 21st. <laughs> <laughs> okay, motion. I move the minutes of January 21st as presented. Second. Motion made by uh, Tom Koenig, seconded by Tom Mahon. Any changes? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So that's six zero zero. Okay, next one is January twenty fifth. Gotta get to get to the end of this. Um, Chair, I move the minutes of January twenty fifth with the corrections. January. Okay, motion by Tom Koenig. Seconded. And, and seconded by Bill Boyd. And what corrections would you like to make, Tom? On page six. Line 25, um, I was talking. It says that uh, I, I was talking about the Griffin Street uh, boat ramp and Griffin Street, comma, the size of the bridge under the river and the other complications in the area. I don't believe I, well, I might have said under the river because sometimes I don't speak what I'm thinking, but I clearly <laughs> wasn't thinking about a bridge under the river. <laughs> I was thinking about a bridge under the railroad tracks. Okay, so you'd like to say under the railroad under the tracks railroad tracks instead of river. Um, and down in line twenty-eight, uh, it says a boat ramp is in T an appropriate way, and it should be not an appropriate way. Change to not. Yeah. That was that was all that jumped out at me. Any other changes? Yes, Jody. Just one. Thank you, Nancy. Page ten of eleven, line three. I think a word was missing, potential budgetary impact. For clarification. Yeah. Thank you. Potential budgetary. Gotcha. Any other changes? Okay, seeing none, there's a motion by Tom Koenig, seconded by Bill Boyd with corrections. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Six zero zero. Okay, January 28th. Move the minutes of January 28th. Motion made by Tom Mayhan, seconded by? Seconded. Bill Boyd. Any changes, corrections? No. Jody? Thank you, Nancy. On page 7 of 12, uh, line 22. Sarah Twain, she remarked in all the years she's been in public service, she has always said that the health care costs, especially with health care increases and the New Hampshire State Retirement Plan are some of the largest expenses of a municipality. So concessions should be costs? Costs and add, just for clarification, the New Hampshire State Retirement Plan. Yeah. And that's it for me. Thank you. Okay, so increases in the New Hampshire State before the retirement plan. 
right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other changes? Seeing none, all those in favor with the correction say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Six zero zero. Okay, comments from the press, saying none. Comments from the public, saying one. Comments from the council. Bill. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Just very quickly, the, uh, the local firefighters 2904 on March 13th at 12 noon are sponsoring the Green Balls of Fire uh, bowling fundraiser at the Merrimack 10 pin at 12 noon. Uh, all the proceeds are going to benefit the Muscular Dystrophy Association. When is that again? March 13th. You can sign up in teams of four to six, is my understanding. And for further information, you can go to their website at www.iaff-2904.org. And it's going to be at the Merrimack 10 pin on DW Highway, March 13th at 12 noon. Excellent. Anything else? That's all I got. Thank you, Madam Chair. Anyone else? Jody. Thank you. Just wanted to give you all an update. Um, attended Conservation Commission meeting this past Monday, February 22nd. Um, we're still looking for one full time member and two alternate members. Just give you a couple of updates on some of the um, pertinent information. Uh, the Conservation Commission was very busy over this past week and weekend. Um, and we had several mem members of our subcommittees who are regularly out on the properties, um, which is really a benefit to all of us in town. There was um, some tree cutting that shouldn't have been taking place over by Horse Hill, by Wasserman on Horse Hill Nature uh, Preserve by Wasserman Heights, and um, that was addressed and dealt with by uh, town officials. And there's going to be a future discussion about it, but we discussed it publicly at our meeting on the 22nd if anybody wants to watch the videotape. Um, there's also continued discussion about the potential target shooting ordinance. Um, we have run into a couple of legal roadblocks that we're trying to work with. Um, the town attorney's been very helpful and um, Eileen's been very helpful working with uh, the Conservation Commission on getting some wording uh, together that might be enforceable. And um, just to let everyone know, um, there uh, was some target shooting. There, well, the biggest problem is on the Greater Woods parcel, the, the target shooting, and especially with the piece of property now that we own, that's where a lot of the target shooting that was just purchased by the Conservation Commission, approved by the town. Um, and one of the Conservation Commission members um, literally was out on the property on the trail and someone was shooting across from the trails and he had bullets whizzing by his head. So it is a problem. It is dangerous. And um, yeah, it, it, it happened this past weekend. Um, the, the police department was called. The police department was contacted. The police department was very responsive. They came out because the people that were target shooting didn't understand what the problem was. So the police, um, I did believe, they issued a few citations under the laws that we do have. Um, and littering is, is a big one. But there is, I believe, um, they're researching some of the state RSAs. I believe there is an RSA out there already that prohibits shooting um, firearms across trails. So um, we're, we're talking about signage, um, th things that we can do to try and educate people and hopefully um, take care of these issues before someone gets hurt. And there was some unauthorized um, all-terrain vehicle use on Horse Hill Nature Preserve, which there is no... Um, ATV use allowed on Horse Hill and members of the Conservation Commission again worked with the police department to um, try and educate some people that they think might have been out there with their all-terrain vehicles um, unauthorized. So they were very busy with tree cutting, target shooting, and unauthorized motorized use um, over the past week or two. So I just wanted to make sure you all were updated. We, like I said, we had public conversation. If anyone cares to watch the videotape and get more specific information, but I wanted to make you all aware of the basics anyway. So thank you. Thank you, Jody. Anyone else? Tom Kane. Yeah, I wanted to apologize for missing the meeting two weeks ago. I was sick. You didn't want me here. Um, don't get sick very often. I was in bed and for about 40 hours, which really amazed me. But I, I did miss uh, Tom's announcement that he was 
of retiring from the council, and I wanted to extend my Say congratulations that I wasn't and thanks. Running for re-election. Well, it's close enough. <laughs> I don't think you're going to get written still in. Still a different <laughs> word, but uh, it means the same. I uh, I just wanted to add my uh, congratulations on that non-renewal non, non to you and <laughs> thanks for your service and, and your guidance and everything in the past uh, many years. I uh, appreciate the work you've done for the town. Okay. I got Anything one more. Else? Oh, you want to go? Uh, in all the hoorah at the last meeting, I forgot to inform you that I've been elected secretary to the on the New Hampshire Rail Transit Authority Advisory Board, which is the reincarnation of the entity. Uh, there's now two entities. One is the board, which is a much smaller, a nine-member board, and then there's the advisory board, which is a much larger board. It can get up to 31 members. So we had a, an initial meeting at the end of January. So anyway. Um, so you'll be busy just in different things. Well, as long as the council continues to appoint me as the designee to the Real Transit Authority, <laughs> I will be. Make, a, make us an offer. Yeah, yeah. Has anybody jumped up to take that one? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's not true. I am I am interested, but I'm not going to overstep Council Mahon. He has, brings experience to it. Yeah, so no history. Okay, yes, Finley. Uh, no, I, I'm glad Tom had reminded me. I as well missed the meeting, but I... I had a funeral to attend in Western New York, so I wasn't here for the last meeting to hear the news uh, about Tom. And um, I, I've had the opportunity, and, and I consider the privilege to have uh, worked with Tom on many capacities over many years. And um, while to some he he may and might not be the perfect adjective, but I know I can count on Bill Boyd for a better one. He might come across as crotchety at times. A, uh, curmudgeon. A curmudgeon, okay. It, the, 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 Ma, you're we, polite. We, <laughs> <laughs> we who know Tom Mahon know that it's just his way of talking. I, I, I told my son he had a coach that yelled all the time. It was his first one. He was uh, in high school. And I said, he's really not yelling. He's talking to you. And that's, that's the same with Tom. He's really not a curmudgeon. He's, he, that's the way he talks to you. It's communicating. And it's communication <laughs> style. Uh, I'm I'm gonna miss him. I will have him on speed dial. Um, I've already told uh, him that. Uh, absolutely. What we, uh, I, I mean, even in conversation earlier this evening, um, coming up with comments you had to make on another issue, mm -hmm. it was. Uh, I, I see that's gonna be sadly missed. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, I definitely appreciate. It. I'm disappointed by the news, um, but uh, you'll free up a little time now. So, I thank you for everything all these years, Tom. Thank you. Okay. We do go back a ways, don't we? A couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> a little more hair and a little less belly. <laughs> On that note, motion to adjourn. I will take a motion. Who, who made it? Bill. Bill Boyd made the motion to adjourn, seconded by Jody. I'm sure there's no opposition, but let's take a vote. All those in favor, six Aye. zero. Good evening. <laughs>